Across the ocean, where the sky meets the sea, most only saw the horizon. But the wayfinder could see and feel far more. He perceived another world entirely, one where the waves, winds, and stars spoke a language all their own. He voyaged across the open ocean in his canoe, over incredible distances, from one end of the earth to another, with those brave enough to sail with him. No maps, no compass, no books guide his way. But he is not afraid. He does not need them. For the sky above is his map, and the stars his compass. And even in the darkest of nights, when he could see nothing at all, he could still feel the ebb and flow of the currents beneath him. Their movement was like a story he could read, the shift and pull of the waves, a chart from which he could plot his way. He traveled across the Pacific as his people had done for generations. Thousands of years of knowledge passed from one master navigator to another, tracing back halfway across the world to the very first wayfinders. The Pacific had nurtured and spread life throughout its shores for millions of years. Plants and insects found new homes carried by its waves, sea life carried by its currents, birds carried by its winds. And thousands of years before, his ancestors built ocean-faring rafts from bamboo on which to traverse its waters. Perhaps they yearned for new land, sought earth from which they could farm anew. They wondered what lay over the horizon and imagined beyond their own shores. So they sailed out of Southeast Asia, taught themselves how to read the winds and chase the ocean currents, how to map the sun and stars, decipher formations of birds and clouds as one would read an atlas. Over time, they mastered the art of building double-hulled canoes. They wove lengths of sail entirely by hand and carved seafaring hulls from trees Every vessel was crafted from the natural riches of the islands they discovered. These men and women were explorers and adventurers, courageous enough to venture into the unknown and skilled enough to survive and flourish on new lands. Over thousands of years, each generation traveled farther than the last. They discovered thousands of islands and the ocean connected rather than divided. By 700 years ago, they had reached Easter Island, Hawaii, and New Zealand. These people of the Pacific shared the ocean, its water, its winds, its sky, a vast world that one might simply call Oceania. But long ocean crossing voyages became less of a necessity as these island nations grew to become self-sustaining. Eventually, the people of Oceania would no longer sail across the ocean, that the wayfinding knowledge that once was fundamental to their way of life would fade from cultural memory. The deep knowledge built over thousands of years was broken. And as this wayfinder sailed by the sunset those hundreds of years ago, traveling home to the Hawaiian Islands from Tahiti, he could not have known this would be his last voyage, the last voyage of his people. Not for another 600 years would his descendants sail again. And until that time, these voyages and those of his ancestors all of their adventures and travels, these would only be stories. <laughs>